I don't have speakers, I'll, I'll, I'll speak loudly. Um, once again, my name is George Anigas. I'm the principal here at Frontier. Uh, just a little background about me. Uh, this is my uh, fifth year here uh, at Frontier. I've been in education uh, since 1998. I uh, taught in New York City for many years. Uh, I've been an administrator uh, here in Western Mass for the past goodness, 10 or 12 years now. So um, we're going to do brief introductions. We're going to do a, an overview, and you're going to have a chance to ask questions as well. And I hope the tour was I hope the tour was fulfilling also. So I'd like to introduce our assistant principal. Uh, go ahead, Scott. Good evening, everyone. My name is Scott Dredge. Uh, this is my 17th year here at Frontier. Um, ninth as an assistant principal. I taught special education before that. Um, and yeah, so I kind of oversee we split up our duties. I kind of oversee athletics, building grounds, maintenance, safety, uh, and security. Uh, I am the 504 coordinator for the building, and that's pretty much it. And, you know, discipline. Uh, so that's what I do. Uh, Kelsey? Yep, I'm Kelsey Kropp. I'm the school counselor. I'll be the school counselor for this whole class for seventh and eighth grade, so I'll follow them through middle school. This is my fourth year at Frontier. So I started, and then immediately the pandemic hit, so it's been a roller coaster. Um, but I'm excited to meet all your kiddos and have a great seventh grade year. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Dennis. I'm one of the school nurses here. I will also have a seventh grader coming in next year, which is exciting. Um, and our nurse's office, our health office is there to meet all the needs of our incoming students. Looking forward to getting to know them. Uh, I'm Beth Smith. I'm the seventh grade team leader. I also teach seventh grade English. Um, so I won't teach all of your students, but I'll teach a good amount of them. This is my fourth year, yes, because Kelsey and I came in the same year. Um, and it's my 18th year teaching, I think. Um, and I actually taught in New York City at the same time that George was there. Um, and. Of all the schools that I've ever taught in, which is quite a few at this point, um, this is by far my favorite. I feel like this is, I found my, my forever place and uh, I hope they want to keep me here for a really long time because it's where I really want to be. So it's nice to see you all. So we're going to do a few, uh, we're going to give you some information, some general information about seventh grade. Uh, we're going to go over uh, scheduling, give you some information about uh, clubs and activities and sports, uh, and you'll also have the opportunity to ask questions. So, so just so you understand, so right now there are approximately 115 students in, in the seventh grade. Um, class sizes typically between 18 and 22 students. Uh, and as you saw, hopefully on the tour, the, the, the distance between classrooms is it's very, it's very close together. They're not they're not traveling uh, to the lengths of, to the other side of the building. They're they're staying in very close proximity to each other. Um, the middle school team uh, meets twice a week, and this is really this is really important to uh, the, the sort of function of our school. Uh, it's a great time uh, for the teachers to collaborate, to talk about students, uh, to, to basically start thinking about if there need to be interventions or whatnot. Um, so it's, it's, it really is a team-based approach in our middle school, uh, and it works really well. Um, uh, the middle school is substantially separate from the high school, so they're not interacting with high school students. They're not, they're not in the hallways with the high school students. They're not going to lunch with high school students. Um, they're not, they're, they're really not, there are common areas, but even then, like when they have gym uh, or, or whatnot, they're separate from the high school students. So, so just so you understand, that, that's definitely, um, I know for some folks that's been a concern, so just so you know that that's really not something that happens. Um, and just so you know, in terms of tech, all of our students are getting Chromebooks, and prior to COVID, they kept them, here, they housed them here at school every night. Uh, with, once COVID hit, like we we let them take them home. So uh, students do get Chromebooks. They do. Uh, they are allowed to take them home. Uh, we recommend getting insurance for them uh, in case uh, anything happens to it. Uh, it'll be covered. Um, and I, once again, we do have a seventh grade team leader in Beth. Um, so uh, she's she's integral to what happens uh, here at our school. So students that are on IEPs or 504s, there will be transition meetings happening this spring. I believe some of them have already started. So just so you understand, so we have teachers coming from our school, going to the, visiting the elementary schools, 
to, to plan for the, I, the students that are on IEPs and 504s. So if that's, if that's your student, um, just so you know that, that we're collaborating with the elementary schools to ensure that there's a smooth transition. Um, we are gonna have a step update in June. So that means that all of the elementary school kids are gonna be able to come up to Frontier. Uh, they're gonna get to tour the building. They're going to get to um, see what clubs and sports are, uh, are offered to them. And the high point of the day, does anybody want to take a guess as to what the high point of the day is? Lunch. It's lunch. They love eating in the cafeteria. Yeah, that's, so they get to have lunch here as well. So um, that's happening in June. So if they weren't able to come tonight, um, they'll get a chance to come and tour and see things uh, on Step Up Day. And then the night before school starts, we have what's called an ice cream social. So we invite all of the seventh grade students to come. We ask them to bring their schedules, to have the opportunity to, to, to have ice cream, to mingle with each other, um, and then they have the opportunity to walk around the building to get a sense of where their classes are. They can check right on their, right on the, actually, they'll be on their phones now. Um, they, can, they can see where the rooms are gonna be, and so when they come in the next day, they'll have a sense as to where they're gonna have to go. Um, and also the, the, the seventh grade team is really good about um, working with them the first few days of school, you know, making sure they know where everything is, bringing them to their exploratories, bringing them to, to wherever they need to be. So, sports. So, our AD, Carl Sear, is going to be sending out information about sports uh, over the summer. Um, so, keep an eye out for that. So we typically roll over the info. The info from Power School gets rolled over in July, so it's pro it'll be happening sometime after that. You'll be getting uh, an email from our AD. Uh, we do offer a number of sports. I don't know if you want to speak to any of the sports, Mr. Dredge. I mean, <clears throat> the biggest one is uh, some of our kids who might want to try out for like soccer or volleyball or whatnot. Those happen. Those tryouts happen for the school before the actual school year starts. So you'll get information from the coaches once once you sign up through what we have. We have a platform called Family ID. That's our online registration portal for sports. The coaches will then reach out to uh, prospective uh, candidates and will like publish like tryout times. Um, soccer and um, volleyball is a uh, for the fall. Those are what we call cut sports. There's limited uh, roster numbers there. However, um, cross country and like field hockey, so there's there's an opportunity to play something else um, if if your child is interested in, in in sports. So that information will come to you this summer. Um, and again, likewise with the other sports, each, before each season starts, you'll get a notification of signups and what that process is. Um, let's cover that. Cool. There we go. Uh, so we have a number of extra extracurricular activities, number of clubs that students can sign up for. Um, we've got a number of them listed up here. I'm, I'm not going to read them offhand, but as you can see, we have we do have a, a lot of opportunities for kids to participate. Uh, if you ever want to get a sense to, uh, um, of what we have to offer, if you go to our website, um, basically where it says student activities, if you click on that link, you'll have the opportunity to see uh, what we offer. In addition to clubs, uh, we also uh, we, we do uh, we do plays. Uh, we've got a music. We have a musical as well. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Question. Are these clubs after school or during school? They're after school. Pardon? After school. Yeah. As I said, I am the school counselor that will be with your class, the class of 2029, for seventh and eighth grade. Um, once they hit high school, we split them up by alphabet between myself and the other two counselors, who are Seagal Cadden and Shelly Allen. Shelly is our director of guidance. Um, those are also two people who are great resources if for some reason I'm out. Um, they will be there to answer, answer questions or be there for students who need them. Um, the other fabulous person in our office is Mary Lipinski, who many of you have probably interacted with already. She is our administrative assistant. Um, and she is sort of the, the person who catches kids when they come into the office and assesses what's going on with them, answers questions if she can, and gets them to us if that's what needs to happen. There are some other folks in the building who are offering support. Um, this, week, this year we have a new position. We have Mr. Um, Grant Bialik, who is our restorative practices coordinator. So he's actually housed right here in the middle school. So he does things like coming into classrooms and doing circles. He does restorative practices. He does um, 
conflict resolution, and he's also a resource for students when they need a break and the guidance office feels really far away. So he's right here located in the middle school for students to have easy access to. Uh, we also have an adjustment counselor, Kirsten Cerencioni, and the school psychologist, Marty Pompusha. So they work more with students who are on IEPs or 504s, um, but they do also see uh, other students as well on an as-needed basis. So, the main thing I'm going to talk about is the schedule. Um, school schedules, I feel, are always confusing when you're looking at them from the outside. They really only make sense once you're in them. So, I'm going to do my best, um, but if you're still feeling a little confused at the end, that's all right. Don't hesitate to reach out with questions. So, we are on a block schedule, and they're divided into the core classes and the exploratories. So core classes are blocks J, K, L, and M. That's math, science, social studies, and English. Everybody has those four core classes. Those classes meet every day, and they go the whole year. The exploratories are blocks Q and R. Those classes can change based on if it's an even day or an odd day, and they only last one semester, unless it's banned or a couple of other exceptions, but most of them only last one semester and then they change for the second semester. So I'm gonna pull up some examples of schedules and it might be, it might be a little overwhelming, but we're gonna do our best. So this is an example of what a semester one schedule might look like. So on an even day, this student has their J, K, L, and M, which is also where lunch happens. So those are their core classes. And these can be in any order. They're not going to be the same for every student. Um, they have advisory. So advisory is every day, kind of like homeroom. Um, so they're there for about, about 45 minutes each day. That's a time to check in with their teacher, to get some homework done, go do some quiz fix-ups if they need to, come see me if they want to. Um, that's kind of their time during the day uh, to get some things taken care of and then they transition to their exploratories, their Q and their R. So I've put in both QE and Q2, because you'll, you'll see both of those. That both means even day. So if you see something that has an E, that means that's an even day class. If you see an O, odd day class. If it says two, even day class, one, odd day class. So for this student, they have multimedia during Q on an even day, and then they're gonna go to PE. On an odd day, our schedule flips. So they come in and they start with their exploratories. So multimedia is an everyday exploratory for most students. So this student still has multimedia in their Q block. And then they're gonna go to art for their odd, art, or for their R odd day class. And then they go back to the rest of their core classes and then advisory. So when that switches for semester two, all their core classes stay the same. Same teacher, same block, same order. Those don't change, it's only the exploratories. So this student now has art in the wild on even days with Q and health for our days with Q. And then on odd days they have yoga and they have our exploring French and Spanish option. We're gonna look at another example of what if my kiddo has band. So band is another one that meets every day. So this student has band on, on our block for an even day and band for our block on an odd day. Now because they've got band every day for the whole year, they're going to be in multimedia EOD, which is every other day. So that's a shortened version of the multimedia class so that we can fit all of the classes in that they need, the PE, the health, the exploring, French and Spanish, and also have room for band. So their multimedia class is only meeting on Q even, and then they've got PE and band on odd days. Their second semester, again, all their core classes stay the same. They still have band every day in R block, and then their Q blocks have changed to exploring French and Spanish and health seven. Last example I'm gonna do, what if my kiddo has study skills? So study skills meets usually during Q block, so it takes one of the exploratory spaces. Um, they also are with their skills teacher for advisory, so they have that extra check-in time, that extra support time. And then this student has P 
PE, and they also have the shortened multimedia every other day so that we can fit all the classes that they need. And then again, when it goes to semester two, core classes stay the same, their study skills stays the same, they switch health and exploring French and Spanish. I'm gonna run to the handouts. So, this sheet with example A, B, and C is essentially these, these examples I've just taken out the core classes. So that you can kind of see, okay, this is how the exploratory schedule goes together. So the four that you are required to take, we've got to have you do health and PE, we've got to have you do multimedia, either the, the, the meeting every day class or the every other, depending on the rest of your schedule, um, and we have to have you do the exploring French and Spanish. Other than that, you've got flexibility. So band, strings, chorus, the art classes, yoga, that was all of the descriptions that went home. So that's what we're picking on this sheet, which many of you have already turned in. Thank you so much. And if you haven't, that is okay. Um, and so hopefully this explains a little bit of how this sheet is laid out, where if your student is doing band, it says stop. And that's because if you're doing band, we already know what the rest of your classes are because there isn't room for any of the ones down here. Whereas if you're not doing band, you are gonna end up with some of these extras like creative writing and art and we need to know what your preference is. Yes? I was told you can take band every other day, but you can't do it every other day band. <clears throat> this particular sheet does not say that we can, but that is an option if there are other classes that we really want to fit in. So we have some students that are in both band and string, so we can, we can have them do one every other day so they can fit both of those. Uh, so if that is something that you want to do, just make a note on the sheet and we can, we can play with it and figure out what we can do to accommodate that. Any other questions about, yes? You mentioned something about study skills as uh, an elective. Can you explain more about that? So that is the support class for students that are on an IEP. So that's their time to meet with their special education liaison and they get their academic support, their help with organizing homework, working on anything they need to be working on. Um, for students who are not on an IEP, but maybe they're on a 504, or maybe they're not on a plan at all, they could just use a little bit of help of organization. We do have a class called TSD, which we can opt students into. Um, and so TSD stands for Transitional Skills Development, and the idea is it's a shorter term, maybe you're only doing it for a semester, maybe even just a quarter, and that's a time for you to have a longer period of time than just that 45 minutes in advisory to be organizing, to be checking in with teachers, and to be getting some structure around getting homework and assignments done. Yes? How many classes? Classes are about 45, 50 minutes, Beth? Like, um, a little under an hour, so it, like they kind of vary, but they're all in like the 55 to 58 minutes or so. Right. Yeah. The core classes. <laughs> core classes, yes. The exploratory classes are a shorter time. Yes. Um, I'm just curious about the lunch in parentheses. Sure. <laughs> so I didn't want to jump too, too much into the lunch schedule because it's a little bit wacky. And it also changes every year as we tweak it. Um, but somewhere in their, in their M block, either right before M or right after M, or sometimes in the middle of M, and you know, they start their class, they go to lunch, they come back to the same class. It just kind of depends on how the schedule shakes out for that year. Um, but lunch will happen somewhere in that 11 to 12.30 window. Yes. Is lunch at the same time every day? It's different on even and odd days. But not. It's a difference of like 20, 30 minutes. Right. Yeah. And again, the, the seventh grade team is so good at helping students figure out where they're supposed to be. Because we know that this is new for all of them, and none of them are really sure where they're supposed to go. So they do such a great job of making sure students are going to the right places at the right time, giving them those prompts in those first couple of weeks of school. And after the kids have done this for a couple of weeks, they'll be, they'll be pros. They'll be telling you what, when their classes are supposed to be and all of that. So are even and odd days based on the date? Yes. Even and odd days mean calendar days. 
So usually it's every other. Occasionally we have a week where we've got the 31st and the 1st, and those would both be two odd days in a row together. Yes? Is there such a thing as, um, in, for example, English or math honors for students who, teachers has already said, are above grade level? Not for seventh grade. Um, teachers do differentiate within the class, so we do have some students that are looking for a little bit more of a challenge. Teacher Teachers can work with them individually to give them some outside assignments um, to accommodate that, but we are still kind of, you know, shoring up those COVID gaps so we don't have advanced options until eighth grade. Yes? Are the clubs um, only seventh, or like only middle school, or is it mixed middle school and high school? It's mixed. Most of our clubs are 7 through 12. Yes. Is there cut sports or are those JV and varsity? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else <Ellen's> got? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. And the other piece of paper. So this graph is what the printed schedule looks like. So hopefully, after this presentation, this makes a little bit of sense. So if we're looking at schedule number one, we've, we see period, J, K, L, M. OK, so those are our core blocks. In parentheses, E, O. So those are classes that meet on even and odd days. The teacher, the room number, course and section are just, that only matters in like the bowels of the master schedule. And then the term, so 22 to 23, that's a class that meets the whole year. If we go down, we see that this student has band. So that's meeting our block on even and odd days. And it's running the full year. Whereas PEMS, PE for middle school, that's only meeting Q even. And if you go over, you see that that's a semester two class for this student. So hopefully this is kind of helping you decode what this means. Um, and the example on the back, is a student who doesn't have band, they just have their full exploratory choices. Um, so they have uh, middle school multimedia, which is the everyday, so it's Q, E, O. Um, and then you can see that they've opted to have PE both semesters. So they have PE2 and PE. Uh, and, that's, and if you look over on the term column, you see that one is for semester two and one is for semester one. Um, one of the things just one of the things we do with the kids when like in that first week is give them a, a more kind of student friendly version of this and like they fill it in in a way that makes more sense to them because I don't know about you guys but when I look at that I it doesn't compute um, so we do really help them to figure out their own schedules and and then this ends up making sense to them, but right. we, we give them a lot of opportunity to, to figure it out. Like right. they're not expected to understand that when they get the piece of paper. Right. And they figure it out really much yeah. faster than, well, this is my ninth year and I think I mastered it this year. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like, have it within a couple days, most of them, it's great. Yeah. So, any last questions for me about scheduling support? <laughs> when do they get the schedule? Schedule now? comes out in July. So they can pick PE for the whole year and an exploratory? Yes. But not the end in exploratory. Like, Correct. Because everyone has to do at least one PE, which is for one semester. And if you're doing band, your other, your other semester blocks are already taken up. So they can do that. They can do both PEs. Yes. But they don't have to do it all year. They don't have to. Only, you know, some kids, they like it, and that's their jam, and that's great. And some kids would rather do anything else. I was one of those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Any last questions for me? All right. And I did forget to add into my presentation, there's one more very important member of our counseling team, Jethro, the emotional support dragon, who lives in my office. She's a bearded dragon. And she makes the rounds to advisories and, um, and hangs out with the kiddos, so they can look forward to that. Uh, hi, everyone. So, again, I'm one of the school nurses. It's myself and Raina Dasto. Um, we are very much a full-service health office in that we 
see ourselves as a catch-all to support students in whatever it is that they need. Um, we are open to students coming in for their regular health needs, the I need a break, I just don't know where to go with what I'm feeling, the I need a safety pin, <laughs> you know, really a lot of different things and we're really happy to see them and support them. Um, we also are responsible for health care planning for students. Um, if your student has a health condition, things like could be asthma or an aller food aller food or insecting allergy or any other health condition, we will hear we will learn about that um, initially from the elementary school nurses. We connect with them towards the end of the year and begin our health care process then, and we create healthcare planning forms specific to the individual student, and those are mailed out to you in the summer. And um, they need your input, you know, your input, there's always a draft, and then you sign that and send it back to us. Um, there is another form, it's typically referred to as the SMIF, which stands for Student Medical Information Form. It will be an online form this coming year. Um, you guys have gotten the same document from all the elementary schools. It's usually blue. I don't know if that means anything to anyone, but it's the one that has your contact information, your emergency contact information, and on the back asks about health care, you know, health conditions, medications, permissions for over-the-counter medications like Tylenol, ibuprofen, that kind of thing. Those forms, the specific health care planning forms if your student has a health condition and the SMIF for all students are required for participation in activities at Frontier such as sports, field trips, they don't get senior privileges so not that. Um, <laughs> so expect those hit that paperwork, it'll be coming to you and um, we do have the pleasure of following up but we don't get them. So, um, also every student um, is required to meet the, the, the state-mandated immunization requirements. I, you all received a letter um, um, in the guidance mailing in January that lists those specific immunizations, um, so I won't bother listing them out. Um, I will mention that there are two vaccines that are due for incoming seventh grade. So follow up with your, when, when you have your annual, when your child has their annual physical exam, it would be useful, perhaps, and efficient if you just mentioned they need some vaccines too. Because we think that everyone will remember that, but it doesn't always get remembered, so. Um, we are always available to answer any questions and um, to support students and families in all ways. Any questions? What, what are the two vaccines? Tdap, which is the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, and meningococcal, which protects against several types of bacterial meningitis. Thank you. Do the forms that are already in file at the elementary schools come your way so that we don't have to send in another copy of all of their stuff, or do we just send in another copy? It would be, but the answer to that is both yes and no. Okay. Yes, we do get an entire file on all the students coming to us from the elementary schools. However, our care planning and contact information forms are annual because people's information changes, health conditions can change. I just meant for like the vaccines for those of us who have children who've already had their yes, annual. Yes, we do get that, but again, especially coming into seventh grade because there are new vaccines required, you'll want to still get updated information um, to us as well. Other questions? Great, we look forward to meeting all your students. Um, does it cost money to play the sports? Yeah, there is a user fee. I'm yeah. There is a user this. fee right now, yeah. it's $125 per season. Um, and that money goes to uh, help support the cost of transportation. Um, and of course, like anything else, um, if, if there's a need base, uh, you know, for your reduced lunch status, that is negotiable through me. Other questions. But did you say how many middle school teams are there? Um, so we have just a seventh grade team and an eighth grade team. Uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, it's 
who wants to participate in a sport that's not offered here, swimming or lacrosse, is there an option to go to like middle school in Amherst or Hamilton? So <clears throat> it's only schools that we participate in through a co-op. Right now our co-op sports are hockey and swimming uh, and alpine skiing. And we do not offer lacrosse nor co-op with another school for that. Yeah. Go ahead. What time does the first class begin and the last class end? So the school day is 7.45 until 2.15. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so basically what happens in the morning, so uh, most, I'm, just, I'm going to assume most of you came in probably the high school entrance. There's a middle school entrance, which is on this side, which is uh, basically the same entrance as uh, the superintendent's office. So the middle school students actually, the seventh grade students will come into that entrance and they'll actually spend time in the cafeteria in the morning before going up to class, being dismissed at about 7.45. That, the cafeteria is staffed as early as, they can get here as early as 7.50. We have somebody in there. Is there a late bus? There's not a late bus, no. Sorry. Is there a homeroom system in high school? No. 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 We do not have a homeroom system. No. Any other questions? Go ahead. Do you go from Parent Square to something else? We, s we still have, we still use Parent Square. Yes. So I now, and because uh, I'm assuming that it's just going to, the information I'm assuming is just going to roll over that we'll have your information. Um, once they roll over all the information in July. Any other questions? And once again, you can always you can email any of us. We we want to make this transition as as smooth as possible. We want your your students to feel as comfortable as possible. Um, you know, this is this is a great place to be. We're very happy. Yes, Ashley. It's not a question. It's a comment. I forgot to say something. I always say one of my favorite things about Frontier is watching the start of the year for the seventh graders. The way the teachers support them and get them transitioned from basically still sixth graders to becoming really seventh graders is amazing. They are so caring. They like shepherd appropriately the students from place to place at the beginning. They practice how to use a lock for the lockers. Like every step of the process is so supported. And I love watching it because I remember when my first was coming here, my oldest was coming here, feeling like, even though I worked here, I was like, what? This is wild. And i just like to share that because it really is a, they do a wonderful job. Thank you. Um, half day, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> half days, is there, is like the library open or, or something? How long is the school open for kids to, to stay? So, go ahead. I was going to say, um, half days, Usually when we're having a half day, we expect the building to be empty unless you're participating in a sport or activity that's like a meeting right after school. That's usually not the case because a lot of our coaches are teachers yeah. and they are doing professional development. Early release days are different. We have clubs and activities that occur during that early release time that end at 2.15, which would end at our regular school day. Um, the most popular one there is our gaming club. Um, it's that we have board games, video games, computer games, and that's a very popular club. Um, and then, like there are times though where there's like, if you're not, I will say, unlike the elementary experience, if you are, if your student is not here for a purpose, they do need to leave the property because a lot of unstructured, unsupervised time leads to problems here. Right. And so the expectation is that they go, they go, <laughs> but, then, but, but on our end, we, we want to encourage involvement in things, which is why we offer that. But a lot of times, and unfortunately, I've had to have kids that, like have to leave who are here, could join something, choose not to. That's not, we, we don't, we're not structured that way. Um, it's a different expectation here at the middle of high school than the elementary school. And and just so you know too, this space is open during the, during at, after school during the regular part of the, the week until five. Until five. Okay. So, uh, uh, with the so exception of Fridays. Fridays. Okay. Um, just kind of a two part. What is there a policy about phone use or phone storage during the day? Zero phones in the middle school. Zero phones. Off and away, locker, 
Okay. Yeah. And do we, like, if we're picking our student up, like, from club or something, I'm assuming that's just you leave after you tell whoever is in charge that you're leaving. You right. There's no sign out. There's no sign out procedure like the okay. elementary school. Okay. It's, a, it's an honor system. Okay. Um, and so I would say that most clubs are activities, like, it's a pretty set schedule. Like, for example, I know the art club meets on Mondays till this time, and it's over. And most kids get picked up at the high school entrance for that kind of stuff because there's less of a chance of supervision at this end of the building because the central <coughs> office is here, but all the are not, you know? Other, whereas we have supervision at the high school end. Do you know how, how long do they go on during the days? Usually an hour. It depends on the club, really. You know, like the biking club, they actually leave when you go mountain biking. So that could take anywhere from an hour to two hours, depending on where they're going. So they'd be out of the building, some of the clubs probably. Usually, 315, I think like our club is like four, you know, it's really set by the advisor, and that's community. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Um, did we answer this already, but is there, you said, is there aftercare to the later? Mm, there's no aftercare, after so to speak. They can stay here? They can stay here in the LMC yeah. until, it's open until five, Monday through Thursday. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Monday, not Friday. Not no. Friday, no. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you for coming this evening. We hope you found it informative. We're looking forward to welcoming your students. Have a good night. Okay. See you all soon. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.